In this video, I'm going to show you how to compare two different dates inside of Jira software. Now we're going to be doing this by using a little bit of a clever automation rule that I really, really like, and I think you're going to enjoy as well. Now this is a little bit more of an advanced video, so make sure you watch it a couple of times just so you make sure you get all the different steps down correctly. And if you have any questions, that comment section down below is going to be available to you so you can ask some clarification questions. Now, before we get into the video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, drop a like if you get bad at this video, and most importantly, check out all the different links in the description down below, as that will show you all the different ways that you can help support the channel. I got a merch store, I got paid courses, and of course I have sponsors for the video. So check out all the different links, go show your support, and let's jump into Jira Software. Don't wanna sleep in, cause I got something to prove. I gotta take what I hate and finally make a move. So inside of Jira Software, we are going to be opening up an issue and essentially I'm going to show you what we're going to be tracking. I'm going to be comparing the created date here against, let me move something to done real quick, and we're going to be comparing it against the resolution date. And essentially I'm going to try to answer the question of well, how much time elapsed from the moment that I open an issue to the moment that I close the issue and try to figure that number out. Now for full disclosure, this is gonna work for any date fields that you have in Jira, but those require some extra steps. Those require you to A, add custom date fields, and then B, the automation is slightly more advanced, which I'm gonna give you a little teaser of what that looks like, but to keep things simple for this video, I'm going to use and leverage out of the box fields that are just gonna work by me calling out like resolution date and create a date. Because if you go the custom fields route, like I'll show you again in a few seconds what that looks like, but it's just a hair more advanced and I just wanted to keep this video, which is already a pretty advanced video, as simple as possible. So let me know in the comment section down below if you do wanna see that more advanced, or what I should say, even more advanced video. But for this one, we're gonna again, try to keep it a little bit simple. So again, let's remember what we're gonna be achieving today. We're gonna to be comparing the resolution date and the created date, and we're gonna to try to figure out how much time elapsed between those dates. And let's take a look at how to achieve that with some automation. I want to take a quick second to tell you about today's sponsor. Keep your customers in the loop with fantastic looking release notes created straight from your Jira tickets. Stop wasting time manually compiling a list of changes. Issues related to a release will automatically appear in your staging area. Focus on telling engaging stories for your headline features while the AI copywriter takes care of the rest. Publish amazing looking announcements with a single click to your website, in-app widget, or Confluence. Make sure you click on the link in the description down below to start your free trial. All right, so one article that I'm gonna be linking down below is I'm gonna put in Jira date smart values into my search and I'm going to be referencing this article here. Now I don't have any of this memorized, I never memorize anything, because when you have the power of the internet, um, we're just gonna leverage the internet. And so we are going to be comparing. So I'm gonna go down, and so you're gonna see the function that we're gonna use, and we're gonna look at this one. We're gonna look at date one dot diff, date two, and then your unit. In our particular unit, we're gonna select days so that we can pick just how much days in, uh, elapsed between a specific date and another date. Now, in fact, I might even change it, right? Just to make things simple, I might just do this one where I'm gonna check today's date versus that created date so I can get how much time has elapsed there. Now, let's just do this one. I think this is gonna be an easy example, but in order to set the stage, one important thing that I didn't mention is doing the comparison between the two dates is great. We're gonna be able to do that function that I just showed you, but we gotta store that information somewhere. So let me show you how we're gonna achieve that. So inside of your Jira project, you actually have to go to the gear, you have to go to issues, and we have to go to custom fields, and we're gonna create a number field. We want to pick this number field here, and we're gonna put like result of date difference. Obviously, you're gonna to wanna to call this something a little bit more valuable to you and your team, but once you have that, we're gonna be sticking it into our project. Now, where's that project? I always forget, so let me quickly remember what my screen was. So I'm gonna go into my screens here, get the name of my screens for my story. We're looking at KWD. So I'm gonna type in KWD here, and we're gonna stick it in both, the bug one and the default one. But once it's there, that field is now available to be populated, and you're gonna to wanna to remember that field because we're gonna need it in the automation rule. So now that we have a place to essentially capture the number for the calculation we're gonna do, now let's go do the calculation. So to do the calculation, you have a couple of different routes. You can go in your project, and all you gotta do is go to automations. This is within the project settings here. So I'm gonna click on that. 
and then I'm going to click on create rule. Now I do recommend that you go down this route because if you're a site admin and you go down the gear and you go to global automation, this is going to make it a global automation rule. And you don't always want that because those do count against your automation quota limits that you get every month. But if you do the automation rule only in your project, then it's basically free. You don't have to worry about those limits. I want to take a quick second to tell you about today's sponsor. Keep your customers in the loop with fantastic looking release notes created straight from your Jira tickets. Stop wasting time manually compiling a list of changes. Issues related to a release will automatically appear in your staging area. Focus on telling engaging stories for your headline features while the AI copywriter takes care of the rest. Publish amazing looking announcements with a single click to your website, in-app widget, or Confluence. Make sure you click on the link in the description down below to start your free trial. So what we're going to be doing here is we're just going to be listening for a date. I want to know when the date is created. Uh, let's see, what are we going to be listening for? We're going to be listening for a field value change. And we're going to be listening for resolution. I want to know if resolution changes. Because if that resolution date changes, then I want to calculate my difference here. So I'm going to basically say, hey, if the resolution changes, which means I have not been resolved, then my action is I want to edit the issue. And I'm going to be looking for that difference uh, date result difference field that we calculated earlier. And so now this is my number field. And all I'm going to do now is I'm going to go steal. I'm going to steal this code here and pop it in right here. Now we do want to change this. I don't want to do weeks. I want to do days. And let me just double check to make sure that days is the right. Yep. Yep. So it stays right here. And essentially all this is going to do is basically say, Hey, Jira, when I got moved to resolved, I want you to compare now. I could go and get the resolved date, like issue dot resolved, but I think it's easier to just say now because this automation rule is going to be triggered the moment that that issue gets resolved. So basically now, right? And so I'm just going to compare now the moment right now with the date that it was created. And I want to know in the number of days, how many days have elapsed. So that's really all I'm trying to achieve here. And so again, I'm simplifying the complex thing, right? Whenever possible, always try to simplify because you can never go wrong with the KISS principle. You, you got to always keep it simple as much as possible, right? So once you have this, I'm just going to click save and I'm going to name it calculate cycle time, I believe is the right one. In the comment section, let me know if I got the wrong one. I, I definitely don't think it's lead time because I think lead time is from the moment you start it to the moment you work on it. But we're looking at the whole thing, which should be the whole cycle time, right? How long did it take you to finish this particular item, which is a really good metric for you to know so that you know how much time it's taking your team to finish an entire request, right? And so it's a, I think it's a pretty good rule for you to have and highly recommend you try it out. So once it's done, all we're going to do is keep this window open because we're going to want to check out our audit log in case things don't work out. We're going to go back into our project. Now keep in mind, we want to go into the right project because if we don't, then the automation rule is not going to work because if you remember, we only specified it to run on a specific project and that was this KWD project. So I'm simply going to take this story here. You can see that I created this story on May 31st and here we are September 9th. So I'm expecting a little over a hundred days. And so all I'm going to do is change the status from to do and I'm going to move it to done. This should resolve it. So that should trigger my automation rule because now that it's been resolved, that tells it, hey, I'm ready. I, I need to be active and we can actually go to the automation rule, click on the audit log and you're going to see that we have a successful run because it was the right trigger. And so KWD 10 was triggered and it was edited successfully and we are looking at KWD-10 and you'll notice now that my results and date difference is negative 101. So that tells me that it's been 101 days since that May 31st date and which is I think very, very appropriate. I think that's actually very, very accurate. Internet and comments again, let me know if that mathematics is right or not. But essentially we now have that cycle time for this request through some automation rules where we're able to calculate, hey Jura, Compare today, right now, this moment in time versus when I created it and how long, how much time has elapsed. And again, your teams can really leverage this information to find out how long is it taking my team members to actually finish their work? Because it's going from the moment that you created it all the way to the moment of completion. Now, one key thing to note, if you're an agile team, if you're a true agile team, this is going to work beautifully. If you're a waterfall team, wanna be agile team, and that means you're preemptively creating all your tasks months and months and months ahead of schedule, this is going to suck for you because if you're doing that bad practice of preemptively creating and predicting the world 
way before you're supposed to predict it. Because remember, Agile is supposed to be just in time, just enough to get to the next step here, right? But if you're that type of team that's really a waterfall team where you think you know all the work that you got to do over the entire project, then this is not going to work out for you because this number is going to be huge, right? It's going to be huge numbers that are just going to be throwing at you because you're not truly following Agile. So anyways, I just wanted you to be aware of this really, really cool automation rule that I like implementing for my teams. I think it gives you some good metadata. You can then take this numerical field and plot it in your custom charts for Jira, not sponsored by them for this video, but do go check them out. And then you can kind of see like more distributions and, and what's taking your team. Like you can get the averages and stuff like that. Anyways, that's it for this video. I'm kind of rambling at this point, but I hope you did enjoy it. And if you did, make sure you smash that like button, leave a comment down below. Check out the links in the description, folks. This really does help the channel grow tremendously as it's all the different ways that you can help support the channel. I got the merch store. I got paid courses. So if you want to take your level of education here in Jura to the next level, check out some of these paid resources. I want to take a quick second to tell you about today's sponsor. Keep your customers in the loop with fantastic looking release notes created straight from your Jira tickets. Stop wasting time manually compiling a list of changes. Issues related to a release will automatically appear in your staging area. Focus on telling engaging stories for your headline features while the AI copywriter takes care of the rest. Publish amazing looking announcements with a single click to your website, in-app widget, or Confluence. Make sure you click on the link in the description down below to start your free trial. Most importantly, don't forget to check out the links for my sponsors down below. Go give their apps a trial, go try them out, leave them a good review, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. So fight, fight.